everybody, this is Oliver, and um, this time I would like to talk about customizing H5P content types. Uh, not in detail, I'll, yeah, well, I'll show you some stuff, but um, it's not really about coding, but I would like to explain some of the pros and the cons of different approaches, because you can, if you want to modify um, H5P content, you can uh, patch the code, you can um, fork the code, and you could use hooks to change the code. And uh, well, all of their advantages and disadvantages. And um, yeah, let's talk about that. So, um, in order to not become too theoretical, I would like to have a look at a content type first, and you will know it. It is true false question. So, um, just as a simple example, uh, let's say we wanted to change the color of the buttons because we don't like it in white. Um, so, what would we do? So, of course, if you know about coding, we would change the CSS. And uh, just so you see what we're trying to, to achieve, we would like to change the color of these buttons. And um, um, yeah, browsers nowadays have this nice feature, which is called called Inspector, where you can hover over the elements and you can uh, see the CSS classes. So this is one of them. We can click here. And on the right now it shows um, the code, the HTML code, which the CSS, uh, with the CSS classes. And you can see both buttons. Those two have the same class. It's H5P true false answer, and this ends, uh, the, this class has a property called background, and it has the value of uh, pound FFF, which is white. Um, but we could just type yellow, and uh, now the buttons are yellow. But of course, it's not persistent because it's just changing the browser. So, but this is what we want to achieve. Our content types, our true false questions, should always have yellow buttons. Uh, not like if I not press F5 and reload the page, of course, that's gone. Because it's not in the code. So we need to change the code. And first, um, we'll just do the simplest approach uh, there is. It's patching. So we take the original code and just modify it. And um, yeah, somewhere in there must be this line of code that we have to change to make these buttons uh, yellow. So basically what we do, um, doesn't matter if you're on, on Drupal or WordPress, or it could be Moodle, but well, Moodle is more tricky to develop on. I've talked about it before. You would have to locate um, the files, and um, basically um, on Drupal, you would go to your Drupal folder, and then it, there is sites, default, files, h5p. And uh, the original code of um, Drupal's is, or of every library, is in the folder called libraries, obviously. So if we have a look here, we could find h5p true false where is it here um, on WordPress we could um, go in there find the code and modify it we would have to clean the cache on, on WordPress the h5p cache um, or we would have to create the library first upload it to see our changes which is kind of clumsy and I've talked about it before um, Drupal has a nice way to do it on the fly and then when you're done create that library so um, if we want to change the code we could do it here, but on Drupal we can also go to uh, again to this level and choose development. And in here you will see all kinds of stuff. And we're interested in this one, H5P true false, which is uh, right now it's the same code that is used from by the library, but um, on Drupal in development mode H5P will look in this folder first. And if there's true false content type, it will take that one. So um, I have that open in my editor already. So um, I'm in this folder now, and this is the same in here. And this um, true false um, kind of type code here has a folder called scripts, and in there is a CSS file, of course. And here you see H5P true false answer that is um, the same class that we're going to change. And um, yeah, my cursor is already hovering the uh, line that we have to change. We've done that before in the browser right uh, a few seconds ago. So if we change this pound FFF to yellow, and save it. Well, actually, done already because this content doesn't have to be built. See my other video for that. And then, well, it's working already. So if we go back to our true false question and reload the page now, the button will be yellow. So that is working. So we've done our, our first patch, um, which is great. As I said, it's pretty simple, it's straightforward. Um, it's live right away. Um, but it has its it's downsides as well. So um, I think the bi biggest downside, the biggest disadvantage is that um, you've modified the original code. So 
you can what what happens when you update the content type. So there's a new version of true false question, maybe there's a bug fix. And now you update your content type, um, it will overwrite your changes. So then we'll have the white buttons again. Might not matter in this case, but um, if you've done more severe changes, yeah, you might be disappointed. Um, yeah, maybe you say, um, yeah, I'll take care. I never will never click that update uh, button for true false question. Be aware that whenever you um, update another content type that uses true false question, like uh, column or uh, question set or interactive video, there all over the place um, and that gets updated it, it also updates true false question or it may update that so um, you could still override your changes so even if you're fine with that um, that's okay for you maybe you have a system that you know it will never be updated it's done it should run and that's it um, then this might be an option for you but please um, in that case deactivate that reuse button and never share that content because um, what happens if somebody downloads that content or you share it and give it to that person and upload, uh, uploads that to their system? They may want that, but um, it may overwrite their version of true-false question. And um, of course, if they didn't <laughs> intend to or don't know what they're doing, you will overwrite their versions of true-false question. And probably they don't want that. So um, please don't share that content and deactivate the download button. So the next uh, best thing would be forking, um, which is kind of similar. Um, basically, if you don't know the fork, like a quick explanation, um, you can think of development um, as a track where a train runs on. And um, there are several stops, and every stop would be like a version of, of a content type. So a uh, track is run that way. And at some point, you can say, OK, I will create a branch of that track, a fork, and uh, let my train run on that track. So um, actually actually, it's like a copy of the original version, like a, a modified copy. So uh, you clone it, you copy it, and then you do your changes, and then you have two different trains, so two different versions of true-false question, and they can run in parallel. So whenever you update the original version from the HFP hub, it doesn't interfere with your changes, so your changes stay in your version. But actually, it's like Basically, it's a different content type, so they, they may look alike, but they don't have anything in common anymore. So that's a great way to do that. And if you wanted to do that in code, I, I yeah, uh, I'll show it. <coughs> sorry, um, in more detail in a different video, I think, because it's it the basic basic steps. So um, you would go to this uh, version of true false question, and now you would go to library JSON, and I've talked about that uh, in a different video. There is a machine name, which um, is a unique identifier for every library. It's called H5V True False. And what you will have to do here is uh, rename that, like, I don't know, True False Fork. And then you would have to go to, to the code of True False and locate all the relevant um, um, lines of code where that machine name is used. So for example, like it's in this case, <laughs> it's, it's kind of complicated in some cases. In this case, it's here, so there are two true faults, and you'd have to call that fork, and you would have to go through the code. And um, there, there's more. Here it's true false. It has, it has to be true false fork, and, and so on and so on. So you have to do that. And um, there's some special cases for editors. Again, uh, not basically, you do that, and then you have created a fork of the content type. You can change it, you can modify it, and it won't interfere with um, the original code, which is great. Uh, because you still have all the flexibility, um, you can do whatever you would like, um, even without interfering with your official code. But of course, now the downside is uh, you don't benefit from updates of the original code automatically because uh, you're on a different track. And um, yeah, whenever they have to change here, you would have to merge that change into your fork, which in most cases is probably fine. But um, imagine you're doing a lot, so you can imagine your fork or your branch of the track is not close to the other one, but maybe over here. And um, yeah, maybe you, you don't want all the changes to merge in some of them. So you get closer back here, but there's still a difference. And at some point in time, you may be so far apart of each other um, because you've changed the same lines of code, maybe that um, it becomes difficult to merge and changes. So at some point in time, uh, in time, I said, it's like a its own content type. Uh, but if that's fine with you, um, you can use that. It's, it's a nice version. It's totally fine. 
Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, we have hooking, of course. Um, um, how should I play explain that? Um, I should have thought about it, shouldn't I? Um, like at some point in time, um, H5P loads um, this content, and um, it does different things. So it loads scripts, it loads the CSS style sheets, um, does some other things, and at some point, it asks you, like the developer, um, it says. Well, I'm now loading my style sheets. Would you like to give me your style sheet? So that is what you can do here. So at, at that, um, there's a method that you can use to tell H5P, okay, now, um, okay, H5P says, I am loading style sheet, and you say, okay, use mine. And so you could change the color of the, these buttons that way. And um, it's the same for scripts. So um, H5P says, okay, I'm now loading uh, some scripts. Would you like to give me your own script so you can have some JavaScript to modify things, and then um, at some point it may say, "Okay, I'm now loading the editor, which is called semantics." You know that. Um, should I change something in the editor? And you said, "Okay, yeah, do this." So you can do changes that way. And the great thing about that is you don't have to change the original code, but you don't have to do a fork. So you can um, just have your changes uh, kind of in the original code without modifying the original code. Which is great because you still have the the benefit of forking. You can uh, yeah still benefit from updates, uh, but you also have your changes. And um, s well, downside is the same for forks. Um, at some point in time, um, there may be things that are changed in the original code which break your code, but then you have to um, adapt that again. And well, if you're too far apart with your changes from the original code, then at some point it might not work. Um, but in general, this is a clean way to modify your content. So uh, what else? Um, you can share your content, which is nice. So um, if you remember patching, don't ever share your um, patch libraries if people don't know what they're doing. Um, I didn't mention that. You can do that with forking, of course. If you have fork content types, you can share them. It's just a new content type. And uh, with hooking, you can do that as well. You can share your content. And think, but the thing is, um, if um, other people are so, no, let's do it that way. Um, we have our let's say we used hooks here to change the, the uh, yellow buttons, and now somebody downloads this content type and uploads it to their system. What will happen? Um, they may not have the hooks running on their system, so on their platform, H5P will just use the regular white button. It will be just true false question, which is really great because now you can, um, let me, I don't know, add your logos, add your color theme, uh, whatever to the H5P content type, and people can still reuse it. They can download it and use it on their platform, and it's still, um, there it is a normal true false question, or it uses their style sheets. So um, that's really great for, for sharing content that works. Um, downside, of, downside of hooking is, you cannot do everything with hooking. So if you patch and if you fork, you can really change all the code the way you want to, but that is not possible um, with hooking. There, there are some limitations. So sometimes um, things or styles don't get changed in CSS, but by code that you know, then you'll have to add your skip scripts, try to find a way uh, to modify it. Just for example, um, yeah, that can be kind of tricky. Um, yeah, but, but again, you know, the great thing is you can modify um, the original code without modifying it, kind of, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, these are the options that you have. Um, mm -hmm. I'll say goodbye now. Um, so again, you can you can patch, which is nice. It's a quick, convenient way to test out things. Uh, you can fork, which is better uh, because, um, yeah, you still can, you don't have to worry about updates. And you can still share your content. You still can do everything, but you'll have to take care of of um, updates uh, or uh, merge in updates to into the fork that you've created. Um, and you can hook, so you can um, tell HRFE, okay, you're now loading style sheets. Now use my style sheet. Now use my script, um, but without touching the code. So these are the th th other th oh my god, other three. I'm German. TH is kind of difficult. Um, is it the vowel now? Uh, um, what is it? What is it here? I don't even know the word. So um, you have th the, these three options. Oh my God! I should stop right now. Um, you can patch, you can fork, and you can use hooks. And um, yeah, I guess for all of them, I'll create uh, different videos. Well, I'll explain it in more detail. See you then. Bye.